There's lots of cliches about money and the international finance, and I've enjoyed watching it. I often thought, uh, wish this weren't so serious because it's very entertaining about how the silly people who really run the money shows, you know, and the fiat money and the manipulation and, and how Bretton Woods broke down and the fixed rates went to, to uh, variable rates and, and uh, floating currencies. And it's all very, very important and very, very sophisticated. And there's so many different financial instruments to do some predictions uh, on which way to go with the investments. But, but lately, and it's been around forever, uh, you know, when people talk about trade balances, everybody wants a trade balance edge. They want to be able to sell more stuff than, uh, than they have to buy. And that makes, it makes more money. So therefore, they don't just go and say, well, we have a stable currency. All we have to do is deal with a good product. And this will take care of things and the consumers will buy uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't work like that they talk about <coughs> currency war, uh, uh, currency competition because uh, they think that if you have a, a weaker currency your products will be cheap and you'll get to sell more stuff uh, or if you have a strong one that's a benefit too so th this goes on but it's always um, always the manipulation why we don't need that manipulation that's right, Dr. Paul. And even in our title, we talk about strong dollar, weak dollar, stable dollar. These are just code words for special interest dollar, because what is happening is special interests, politicians, the Federal Reserve, they manipulate the currency and the economy to serve certain special interests at the expense of everyone else. And in reality, prices uh, are supposed to reflect supply and demand. They're supposed to give us the truth about the economic situation in front of us so that we could make good decisions. Uh, but instead, we live in a manipulated economy with a manipulated currency, so the prices lie to us. And as a result, people do foolish things, like buy stocks in companies that will never make money, drive their value of these companies into the stratosphere, or entering lotteries to buy houses in Florida that you'll never even see or step into, but you're only looking to flip. This is the environment that the Federal Reserve, by manipulating interest rates and currency, creates. And it creates a lot of heartache when the whole house of cards comes down. So we need the truth. Truthful prices, a sound currency, and being able to see the situation as it is so that we can make good. Yes, and, and you're implying that there would be a market <coughs> to help us sort that out. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen very often, especially in the last 50, 60 years. It's all been a manipulation, uh, and even longer than that, essentially prices that we've had the Fed, and then we had the Bretton Woods and the breakdown of the Bretton Woods, so there's always the man manipulation. So they talk about the advantages of maybe a weak currency or a short-term benefit of a strong currency. I mean, if you just had to pick, you'd think, well, a strong currency should be a lot better than a weak currency. That means you get a stronger purchasing power. But when you talk about trade, then they think that that interferes with the trade and some people don't like that so they want to to rig the system and uh, some people think well what you need is a is a stable currency one that's you know rigid and you know exactly what it is and um, I use I always want to think more about a uh, definable currency you know what it is you know what the measuring rod is uh, that that you can define it. and everybody knows what the definition is but if you use the word stable that means that it's going to be maybe rigid uh, with other currency. Who's going to decide what, what is a stable currency when there's so many variables? So I, I think it's more important to think about a sound currency, uh, a definable currency, and of course all currencies that originate in a market usually has something to identify as a measurement of value. And the uh, things that have lasted the longest and, and easily definable uh, were the precious metals, gold and silver, and they're still around. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something that right now there's no presence there. There's always the manipulation. Everybody, you, you know, uh, uh, when, when, the, when the Fed comes out with a report, uh, the, the people who do the analysis for investment reason will compare it with the month before. And they'll look for maybe two words that have changed. And, oh yeah, he's hitting this. This is what he means. And all of a sudden the markets either go up or go down because of that. Well, that, that's pretty artificial and, and somewhat silly because long term, there are a lot of other factors that uh, de determine what's going on. So uh, the big problem is, is uh, we have fiat currencies. We've had them for a long time. 
and uh, regulators, the Federal Reserve and Treasury and politicians, they all want to, uh, you know, smooth things over because things don't work well when you have a fluctuating currency, fluctuating currencies with, with other currencies as well, and therefore they want to rig the exchange rate. And that's what Bretton Woods was all about. You know, you know uh, rigging the prices artificially, how many, how many dollars to the pound and this sort of thing. And that, uh, that rigging of, uh, of the exchange rates uh, was, always, was never very good. They always cheated and they, uh, always, it always broke down then to have a readjustment. But uh, it was a pretense that they knew what the ratio should be. So it was a major event when the Bretton Woods uh, broke down because then the market had to do it and they had to do what they called floating rates. And in a way, this, that's a market function because the market was going to help source this out. And it actually, it ironically, made more sense than the politicians trying to uh, design the regulation that said what the, ra what the ratio should be one currency to another but it still was fiat and it's still what it did it gave the gave the United States it gave the dollar a lot more power uh, because uh, people trusted it and the dollar the dollar was re, uh, you, you know related to the uh, uh, to, to gold all that time uh, after Bretton Woods. They established it, uh, you know, at $35 an ounce in the 30s, but they kept it there. After the war, we were so wealthy and, and we were spared a lot of damage during the war. So, and we, and, and we, could, we were in a very strong position to grab hold of the control of the uh, reserve currency. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information, and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now, let's continue. And of course, we benefited by that, but what we're going through now is this recognition that the dollar no longer is going to be the reserve currency. But uh, there's a lot of things the investment people go through. What, what, what do they look at to know? Because it does make a difference in, in trade. Because if the dollar is going to get a lot weaker, that in sends a signal that maybe some products are going to be sold. But if the dollar is going up uh, and vice versa. So, so they look at that. But there's a lot of things they look at because they're, they're trained in Keynesian economics. That if you have all these factors and you put them into a computer and then you push a button and it tells you what's going to happen you know, what the price of things are going to be and what the condition would be like, which isn't true, but they're still very important because a lot of people base their investments uh, on some of these trends. For instance, the CPI, look how they hang on the CPI. CPI just went up. And the whole thing is, is, is it's a number that the government rigs. Uh, they can fix it and they can, uh, you know, fudge those number, PPI is the same. But overall, it does have a thrust. They can't, they can't totally uh, hide from it. <clears throat> Matter in fact, the, the best measurement of the CPI would be a housewife that has to go shopping, and she might be able to give you a better hint. You know, these prices are going up, and there's inflation out there. So all these things are, uh, are, are measured and important, and it encourages politicians and central banks uh, to manipulate things in order to try to satisfy a political goal. And that's why, ultimately, uh, they go to wage and price controls, uh, and it can be total, but we have a bit of that going on all the time. I mean, wages aren't set by the marketplace. They're set by regulations, what the government tells us what, what to do. So it's always trying to cover the basis of uh, not having a sound currency or a definition of, uh, of, of a currency, and uh, the disadvantages that are poured on some groups and the others are benefiting, and that's one of the big things we talk about, and also uh, you know, the, the Marxists talk about it because they said, you know, what's going on in this country today are people getting poorer and the wealthy are benefiting by that, which is true, but it has nothing to do with freedom. It's in spite of, the, it's because we don't have freedom. It's because we don't have a sound currency. And yet it's, it's being used right now uh, as, we, as we look at what's happening today that uh, the far left and the Marxists, the socialists all use this to say it's so unfair. 
Well, what they want you to do, and they are pretty good at this because the media, uh, you know, recites this thing all the time, and they go along with this because they have all been trained with the same uh, economists in, in their universities, and that they think that this this will be a, a way that we can measure things. But quite frankly, it it doesn't work. Uh, and uh, and yet they look at so many of these things. Uh, for for instance, if you have market rates of interest, it's very very important. But we don't. But we're, they're still important because they're uh, you know uh, it, if w when interest rates are zero percent, that has to send a powerful message, and that's not the market talking. So, uh, but in the mar when in the free market, the interest rate is very very valuable because it, it's pricing and telling us about savings and uh, how how, uh, how how energetic the people are to uh, invest their money. Uh, but but those those uh, it, th those statistics right now aren't as valuable as they could be in, in a free market. So they're always back to currencies. Well, we it looks like we need a stronger currency this week, or this is it's too strong, too weak. So we want we want a weak currency. Basically, though, uh, most countries uh, want to have a an edge, an artificial edge in trade, so they go and have a weaker currency, and that was the advantage that we had for years because we could manipulate the value of our currency as the uh, managers of the reserve currency of the world. So there have been, been tremendous benefits for us, uh, the fact that we, we got to create the reserve currency of the world. But uh, I think uh, uh, hopefully our little discussion will get people to think, get more people to think about well, why is the currency so important, and what are they using, and what do we have to do to really change this? Because are they going to change it in Washington automatically and change policy so so this uh, uh, this corrects itself, or is it going to get worse until we see much worse times? Um, I think the latter is what we'll see. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with first-hand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free insider club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.